Welcome to the Panasonic conference, press conference, and thank you so much for attending. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Hollywood and announce more great news from Panasonic Lumix. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Yosuke Yamane, the director of Panasonic's Imaging Business Unit. Yamane-san. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We announced the S1H in May, right here in Los Angeles, and received a great deal of reprise from the market. Today, I have brought the final working sample with me, and I'm very excited to unveil all the features here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is S1H. In this compact body, there are many exciting professional features. I'm standing here with a great expectation that this, our S1H will consolidate its position in the cinema industry and become a hero to be used by video creators all over the world. I believe it can be because S1H has boundless creative possibilities. Let me chat more concretely about this possibility. The first aspect is the shooting style. S1H has excellent mobility with very high-end special special specifications. So you can have the various types of shooting styles. We hope that you will shoot your own videos, creating completely new works to fascinate people all over the world. Second is the expansion of the user. There are two major groups of videographers in the world. The big production with huge budget or the independent creator with limited budget. Our SNH will give both of them the opportunity to create professional work at a reasonable price with this compact body. How are we, how are we able to do this with the S1H? Panasonic has a long history and experience with cinema cameras such as Baricam and EBR. The S1H has superb video performance grown from them and the excellent mobility and uh, functionality developed from mirrorless cameras such as the GH5 and S1. We are sure that S1H will create a major change in the cinema industry and establish a new position. Now let me tell you about its main features. For cinema creation, high resolution and uh, high sensitivity are essential. We have already announced that our S1H can record 6K resolution, which is equivalent to a high-end production camera. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Furthermore, I'm happy to announce dual native ISO is ready. The base sensitivity of B-Log corresponds to ISO 640 at the bottom and up to ISO 4000. So even in low light situations, you can create beautiful scenes without any worries. To realize that we decided to adapt a newly developed 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor with a low pass filter to ensure the best balance of resolution, sensitivity, and speed performance. Resolution, sensitivity, gradation, and color gamut are very important cinema creation. Amazingly, our S1H will support 14 plus stop B-log B-gamut 
which is an industry top level. You can use this 14 plus top camera even at a production site where the budget is limited. We are sure that many videographers are looking forward to create their own work using the S1R, S1H. A few minutes ago, I said our S1H can record 6K resolution. The advantage of 6K is not only high resolution, but also expandability of expression. When creating 4K video, you can obtain higher resolution data from 6K and can able to useful when cropping. This is a variable asset for video creators. When shooting a cinema production, you often connect the monitor and the recorder to the camera. You must feel comfortable that the data is simultaneously recorded on SD cards on the camera and the external recorder. With SNH, it's possible to simultaneously record 10-bit cinema 4K 60p, that is DCI 4K 60p. Thereby, you can realize high quality and efficient workflow. Let me share one more piece of information. The leading brand of external recorders is clearly Atmos. Atmos and Panasonic have a good relationship and we have been providing 4 to 10 bit 4K HDMI output recording for the GH series. Today, I, I can tell you that we are developing low output via HDMI with Atomos for the S1H. You can expect further upgrade information for S1H in the near future. Anamorphic was used as a, as a method of uh, widening the aspect as well as the artistic expression with unique taste. And it is now widely used not only in cinema, but also commercials and video SNS. S1H will support 4K anamorphic shooting with the squeezing of various aspects. Later, we will display some works shot with them. Image stabilization is essential for active cinema creation. In cinema photography, lenses without image stabilization are often used. But you don't need to worry. The S1H is equipped with body image stabilization and it's reliable when shooting handheld or shooting with the gimbal. In addition, when using our S series lenses, the dual IS2, which combines stabilization of body and lens, you will feel confident when handheld shooting in the field. When you want to shoot from high or low angle positions or in a narrow location, there may be a shot from various angles required. You can certainly make use of the characteristics of this small camera and shoot footage from various positions at high or low angles. The S1H is equipped with a new newly developed tilting free angle monitor on the back side, so you can realize free angle shooting with a HDMI cable connected without any interference. An important criteria for a cinema camera is that in a tough environment, it's a body you can rely on. And furthermore, it should not stop when you do continuous or long time shootings, like no cut films or time lapse. Do you agree? Thank you. <laughs> uh, Thanks to a new heat management system, you don't need to worry about overheating.
So S1H provides unlimited video recording time and will be reliable at professional shooting sites. The S1H is also a very robust camera. Magnesium alloy is employed to ensure dust, splash, and freeze resistance down to minus 10 degrees. You can use it without any reservations. So, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel the uh, ultimate and uh, unlimited potential of the S1H? Are you excited? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I can't wait to see your work shot with our S1H. And I believe you will want to touch and try our samples as soon as possible. <laughs> but before moving to the touch and try session, give us a bit more time as my colleague Matt Fraser will cover some additional details. Thank you, Yamane-san. When a camera aspires to change what's possible in the DSLM category of cameras, there are many new features that we would love to share with you. However, today we'll focus only on features that impact video performance or reliability. For video performance, we will focus on eight key features of the S1H. The 24 megapixel sensor, 6K full, capture, full area capture, 4K 60p in 10 bit, V-log and V-gamut, anamorphic mode, our dual IS system, variable frame rate, and high frame rate functionality. The S1H features a 24.2 megapixel MOS sensor with an included optical low pass filter to reduce the chances of more and produce a more filmic look. Dual native ISO allows directors of photography to choose from two native film stocks that provide low noise and maximum dynamic range. A typical sensor has one single sweet spot, ISO, that gives you the lowest noise and the maximum dynamic range. If you increase your ISO, you get noisy images. If you reduce your ISO, you lose dynamic range. Dual native uses two analog circuits, one for low ISO shooting and one for high ISO shooting. That gives you two ISOs that deliver low noise and maximum dynamic range. Each photo style of the S1H will have a different set of native ISOs. V-Log is native 640 and 4000. HLG is native 400 and 2500. Our cinema-like profiles are 200 and 1250, and most other profiles are 100 and 640. In addition, dual native works not only for video, but also for stills capture, and gives photographers a native 100 and 640 ISO. Full frame or Super 35? With the S1H, you have both, including access to the entire canvas of the 3-2 aspect ratio sensor to capture video images. In full frame, you have access to 6K, 24P, 10-bit capture in 3-2 aspect ratio using the entire sensor height and width. This allows filmmakers tremendous resolution for post-production cropping of the image and gives freedom to frame shots wider. For stunt work, you can now frame a shot wider and not worry if the action leaves the 16 by 9 region of the frame. You'll be able to crop and follow the stunt in post-production. In addition, support for the use of full frame anamorphic lenses is now possible with this 6K 3-2 aspect ratio, a feature normally reserved for only the most expensive cinema cameras. For productions that require a 29.97 or 25 frame workflow, a slightly cropped 10-bit 5.4K 3-2 aspect ratio is also available. Full frame that is in television spec UHD 3840x2160 as well as cinema spec 4K 4096 x2160 can be captured at up to 30p in 10-bit using the full sensor width. 
For Super 35 capture, television spec UHD 3840 by 2160 and cinema spec 4096 by 2160 can be captured at up to 60p in 10 bit. Now fitting perfectly within the image circle of a Super 35 lens is our four perf anamorphic mode. This allows for the use of all the classic and modern anamorphic lenses that have been in use for over 60 years with frame rates up to 48 and 50p for gorgeous slow motion footage. As you can see, Panasonic is providing you with sensor size options that can work with virtually any cinema lens. Thanks to the low noise and wide dynamic range of the S1H sensor, we can now offer the same V-Log experience normally reserved for our Vericam and EVA1 cameras. This provides more than 14 stops of dynamic range and will work in all existing workflows currently used for EVA1 and Vericam. It's important to note this is not only V-Log. The S1H offers v gamut color that exceeds all current color standards for deliverable content. Since the S1H has V-Log and v gamut, you can now use the Vericam LUT library of 35 different looks and know that the S1H will match the Vericam and EVA1. In addition, for productions that will mix camera brands or for productions destined for the big screen, Panasonic has developed an input device transform file, or IDT for short. This will allow the S1H to fit within the Academy Color Encoding Specification, also known as ACES. ACES is designed to help filmmakers create the finest archivals of their footage with the maximum color fidelity and allows for better matches between camera brands for easy post-production color corrections. Now you can have one compact camera that will work with any cinema camera. The S1H utilizes Panasonic's legendary dual IS system that provides class leading stability of up to six and a half stops of correction for photography and near gimbal like smoothness for video capture. Now special attention has been paid to optimize the stabilization for use with anamorphic lenses. So you can now hand hold the camera and still have a stabilized look. Now for anamorphic productions, it's very important to be able to de-squeeze the image on the monitor so that you can properly frame your subject. The S1H will de-squeeze 1.3x, 1.33, 1.5, 1.8, and 2x lenses using the inbuilt monitor or viewfinder of the camera. In addition, thanks to our in-body image stabilization, it is now possible to stabilize your anamorphic lenses without a gimbal or Steadicam rig. Our stabilization provides optimizations for all de-squeeze functions of the camera. Now here today to talk about anamorphic lenses is Dan Keynes, CEO of Atlas Lens Company. Thank you, Dan. Thanks so much, Matt. Awesome. Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Keynes from Atlas Lens Co. And uh, we're thrilled to be a part of the Panasonic S1H launch today. Uh, our lenses were used on a couple of the films that we're going to see shortly uh, from some of the great content creators who got to use the S1H at the early stages. Um, so when most of us watch a film, typically what we think of as a cinematic experience often comes from the beauty of anamorphic lenses, which is a tradition beginning as far back as the mid-1950s. Um, what's amazing is that today, that anamorphic format and style still holds weight in our minds as a creative choice and an artistic form of expression. Uh, it also allows you to expand your vision. So one of the beautiful things about the S1H is its multi-format sensor and multi-format recording capabilities, uh, bringing an unprecedented amount of creative choice and tools and techniques to filmmakers, uh, really allowing people to expand their vision, not just on the small screen if you have a lower budget, but all the way up to the big screen uh, and really give you a Hollywood level look, um, as we'll see shortly with these new films. So thank you to Panasonic for continuing the legacy of offering more and more uh, capabilities 
to filmmakers and content creators everywhere. I'm really excited to see these anamorphic films that we'll see shortly. Thanks so much, and back to Matt. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. So popular in the GH5 is our variable frame rate mode, also known as VFR for short, and can allow for slow motion capture at up to 60 frames per second in 4K and 180 frames per second in 1080p, and delivers the file already slowed so you can inspect the shot and see if you like the result. Now new to the S1H are native frame rate codecs of 48 frames and 120 frames. These allow you to capture sound and also autofocus during capture. In addition, you can view the content from your editing software in its native form or slow it down for beautiful slow motion footage. Now one design goal of the S1H is to provide unlimited recording times in all frame rates and resolutions without fear of shutdown due to overheating. To achieve this goal, our engineers have designed a fan-based cooling system that is extremely quiet and yet effective to allow the camera to record without fear of overheating within the rated ambient temperature limit. Normally a fan means you can no longer use the camera in a damp adverse weather condition without some serious protective measures. But the S1H maintains the same level of dust, splash, and freeze resistance as the S1, the S1R, the GH5, and the GH5S, so you can shoot with confidence. The dual UHS-2 card slots are designed to be used with V90 spec SD cards to ensure all codecs can record without stopping. Now, tremendous customizations of file allocation is possible with this dual card array. You can choose to record your image and a cloned backup to a second card. You can assign files to different slots. For example, photos to card one, videos to card two or photos in RAW to card one and JPEG to card two, just to name a few customizations. The system is also hot swappable. So when one card is full and the other is recording, you can change the first card and keep rolling. So when we say unlimited, we mean unlimited. And finally, to demonstrate just one attention to detail feature of the S1H, tally lamps are included on the front and back of the camera so that your talent knows when the camera's rolling. So now that you've seen the features of the S1H, let's hear a little bit about what it's like to use. Here today we have five filmmakers to, to, I'm sorry, to discuss their experiences. Now let's start with our UK representative, director Peter Hamblin. <laughs> Hi Peter, I got, I got very choked up, I'm so excited to see you. <laughs> Nice to see you. Thanks Good for to see you, too. Is this on? Yes? It's not on. We'll wait just a second. Uh, how are you all doing? Oh, it's the button. Got to push the button. Yeah. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be something I'm working on without at least one mistake. So we're there in we good go. shape. <laughs> so, all right. So, so Peter, um, I know you're working on a feature, actually, with the S1H right now. So yes. I'm hoping you can let some folks know what, what you're working on. And really, we want to hear some of your experiences with the camera and why you chose it for your feature. Cool. Well, um, I've actually been working with Panasonic for a few years on different projects in the UK. And um, they approached me to do some test footage recently on the um, S1H. And it just so happened that we were in pre-production on a short film. And, well, short film, I call it a short film. It could be a short, long, or a long short at the moment. It's going either way, right? Um, four hours short. Yeah, yeah, four hours. Um, and I just thought it was a perfect opportunity, um, a perfect merriment to really throw the camera into a situation where there were different scenes, different opportunities to really test it out. And if it lived up to everything that it said it lived up to, it would be awesome, right? Um, so we, we are making a, a film that's kind of close to me and it's close to the brothers that we're talking to. It's called In Hope of Nothing. And it derives from being an independent filmmaker and, and living in this world and trying to get things greenlit. And an, it's my first fiction feature as well, or fiction short, if whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's really about two brothers who three years ago, um, they tried to make a space odyssey film. It's very tongue in cheek, very kind of like a fun, light hearted kind of film. And they tried to make a space odyssey film and it all fell, fell apart because they couldn't agree on the lead character, the characterization of their lead character. Okay. Um, and the funding got pulled. 
And then through some unique circumstances, they get the funding back. And then this sets them off on this journey of trying to make this film. And to me, it's, there's two elements to it. It's this emotional sibling relationship, but it's also about being an independent filmmaker and the, the turmoil that we go through in trying to make these a success. Um, like part of my process when I make films, the first thing I ever do is I make a poster. Because it feels right, right? And you okay. feel like you've made yeah, a film. Yeah. Actually, you've got something solid and you can you visualize You like to start it. from the end. And totally. The and okay. I've got like my ratio of finished posters to finished films is a bit off at the moment. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> um, so putting the S1H uh, into, into play, I think the most exciting thing for me, and I think one thing to watch in here is that I love the language of film. I love vintage film. I love the romance film. We've all seen these cinematic films in the past. And when I started out making films, it was on iMovie and shooting on basic DSLRs. And I used to mess my footage up. I used to put black bars top and bottom. I used to put grain in. I used to put these horrible sci-fi flares in okay. because that was the cinematic language. Right. I didn't know I was talking anamorphic. And that was the exciting thing about this for me. It was like bringing these anamorphic lenses and putting them onto this camera that is at a relatively cost-effective price point. Right. And also with the anamorphic lenses, we're not talking about just basic... We're talking about the old school 1970s um, Cinevision lenses. And so in this speech, if you could just watch, look how beautiful the flares bleed in and out. The character within that, um, that that lens brings to this kind of cinematic feel. I think as well, we shot in a lot of low light circumstances as well. Um, and man, it was amazing. I was with Data, who's um, a colorist um, here in Hollywood yesterday, and we we're just looking through the footage. And it was just incredible how much detail was held there. There was no, there was no noise um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tones. It was really incredible. Yeah, I think our goal ultimately was to democratize anamorphic workflows, make it more cost effective, um, also a bit lighter weight and easier to handle. Uh, it sounds like we've delivered on that, at least from your preliminaries. So I'm, I'm very excited to see the full project when it's completed. Totally. And the fact that it's lightweight, I'm very demanding on my Steadicam operator. Um, <laughs> Steadicam operators notoriously can be quite grumpy because they're holding the camera the whole time. And we had this guy rushing around the whole time. And because it's a smaller rig, it's so much easier. And it's, it, it's just a, it's a great workflow. Well, it's very important we put smiles on the faces of Steadicam operators. So again, thank you very much, Peter. Thank you guys so much. And thanks so much for Panasonic for having me. I appreciate it. Right, thank you. All right, coming to us from New York City is director of, film, uh, director of photography, Nick Davis. What's up, Matt? That's you. That's me. <laughs> How's it going, Nick? What's going on? All right, so Nick, uh, we got, it's bright, it's yeah, just so everybody knows, we got involved early. Nick's been a very cam shooter for a number of years. I've known Nick from working with him at NAB. Uh, I consider him a friend. I consider all these filmmakers my friend. They probably don't consider me their friend, but that, that's a question for them. Um, but in, in Nick's case, we got him pretty involved early, yeah. and I loved his basic concept. His basic concept here was to take and make a lightweight camera rig that he could effectively use photographic lenses on and get yeah. high-end looks. So I didn't want to steal too much from you, but why don't you go through and explain what you're working on. So the mix-up was really, um, we wanted to show off like how portable this camera is. So we didn't use big gimbals or any cranes. We wanted to use, like, we wanted to use products that people would afford when they buy this kind of camera, right? Um, sort of the wheelhouse of the of the yeah. end, of the lower level creatives, right? Or the yeah. budget budget budget. Not that Leica creatives. M lenses are affordable, but yeah, you know, they you know that's what I had access to um, for my own. But yeah, I you know the the fact that you can actually put this whole camera on a Ronin S, you know, and just like shoot 4K full frame and 4K Super 35 was very useful. Now you had an interesting experience because you were. You're used to shooting Super 35, yeah, and you almost experienced like an epiphany with the whole switching from four yeah, frames to Super that, 35. That, that's the cool part. So the Kodak doesn't change, the color doesn't change. So effectively, you get like two focal lengths without losing any sort of resolution or quality. Yeah. So yeah. effectively, your your 50 becomes a 75, and you can just kind of flip back and yeah. forth. Yeah. You can flip back and forth, and that's what we did. We used three main lenses: 28, 35, 50, okay. for the entire project. Um, the only other thing that we that I want to point out is like extreme heat is like one thing that I was surprised. I thought the camera was going to melt. Yeah. Like so the he, sound devices got like shut down that day. Yeah. So he, uh, just so everybody knows, Nick 
was sort of our crash test dummy on this particular production. Um, we ended up, <laughs> he got thrown into a heat wave in New York City. It was 105 degrees that week. Yeah. And uh, the camera, I guess, performed flawlessly. Yeah. And then we threw him in like a horrible rainstorm. Too. Yeah, with lightning and I didn't get electrocuted, so. Yeah, and, yeah. and again, the camera had no problems. So yeah. I think we're good. Awesome, Nick. Were there anything else you wanted to share? Um, no, I, I think that the, uh, the tilt screen is amazing. I use that a lot, especially when you're on a gimbal. The fact that you can pull it out and tilt it, even if you're shooting up high, um, helps. But other than that. I'm... Awesome. Well, we can't wait to see your piece. So thank, thank you. you very much. Nick. Thank you. All right. So our first Los Angeles based director of photography is Carissa Dorson. Hi, Carissa. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Oh, so I'm super excited to have everybody see your piece because it, it's pretty amazing. So, um, Carissa, why don't you briefly touch base on what your piece is and what you were trying to accomplish with, with the camera and ultimately how it worked for you? Yeah, so I'm really inspired by dance and movement, and I took this as a great opportunity to shoot and direct a dance film and just put a little put a, an anamorphic lens on a tiny camera and just move. Um, and that along with the dual native ISO gave me a ton of flexibility in these practical locations because uh, I love using natural light and it really gave me that flexibility. Um, so should I talk more about what I made? Yeah, the dance absolutely. Film? <laughs> yeah. So uh, just to tip you guys off, we're going to see a little sneak preview of all the work together. But why don't you give us some just some cues of what it was that we were seeing? Yeah. So it's called Alive. It's about a woman who wants more out of her life. Um, and she imagines herself dancing in empty spaces, her work and her home and a bar that she goes to after work. Um, and they empty out and she just dances and shows who she truly wants to be. Yeah. So I know that with your piece in particular, there were some scenes that you actually shot in 6K for anamorphic. And then there were other times where I think you were switching to Super 35 for more of the, the faster moving objects or subjects that you were shooting. Um, how did it work out for you? That was really great. It was nice to be able to swap between Super 35 and uh, the 6K full frame. Um, and I did use the 6K mainly for the static shots. Um, and it was really beautiful. I loved the separation and the depth of field for those shots. And then for pretty much all the gimbal shots, I went to Super 35 and for some better movement. Um, yeah, and yeah. this was the Academy kind of Super 35 range, so it was the four by three and then you right. squeezed in post. So, And then um, in terms of the color and how it finally rendered, I'm pretty happy with the overall results. I, I, I wanna point something out, it's, this is important. Um, so there's a scene that Chris and I have we had a difference in opinion on how it should be graded, and she's the artist and I'm an idiot, so we went with her, ro <laughs> her move. So ultimately we have a scene where the, the artist, uh, the dancer is behind a window, and we had an initial grade done, and you see all this blue tonality in the sky, and you're able to see the tree in the background, and what was it that you said about it? Oh, I said it was too perfect. Yeah, um, <laughs> so we end up blowing out all the highlights in order to be able to Not, not completely. Isolate. Not completely, but, but ultimately, yeah. It, it, it's fun because you have this level of flexibility in this yeah, camera. Yeah, the dynamic range was really impressive, and I, was, and I saw that in the color grade. Yeah, I th and I think it's important to understand that artists make decisions. We have to make specific decisions about what's happening. And on a budget like what you were you know, saddled with, which I'm going to say, um, you, you can't close a city street down. You can't remove cars off of, the, off of the street. And so sometimes a creative decision has to be made just to deal with things that were going on in the background that you weren't exactly happy with in the result, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, seeing out the window and just seeing you know, Hollywood out the window uh, presented some problems, but I'm really proud of what came out of this. Right, and so I just wanna make sure we went through the entire creative process, or not all of it, but at least the, the creative process of making decisions when you're shooting. And I, I appreciate the work you did. It really is an awesome piece, and uh, I can't wait for everybody to see it. Thanks so much. All right, thank you, Chris. Now, also from Los Angeles is Director of Photography, David C. Smith. Hey, Matt. Hi, David. How you doing? Doing good. I see we got the memo this morning. Yeah, we went, well, you have nicer jeans than I do. Yeah, so, enough. okay. That was not rehearsed, by the way. That's just us vamping. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so, David, you and I have actually known each other for quite a while yeah. um, through driving plates and also through Third Law Productions. Um, you know, you've done a lot of major Hollywood production, uh, but... You know, this is a little bit different wheelhouse for the camera. Sure. Uh, I wanted to get your perspective on how you see using the camera and ultimately 
why it worked for your production. Sure. Um, it's funny, right before coming up, I was talking to a friend of mine over here in the wings, and he summed up my thoughts on the S1H perfectly. He said, is this it? This is the camera we've been waiting for? Uh, and truthfully, I think the S1H is. Um, we've had a long experience uh, using Lumix cameras in a variety of, of strange scenarios. I do a lot of vehicle work, a lot of uh, putting the camera on moving platforms. Uh, the piece that I shot uh, is called Live Your Play, uh, and it's a film about a young woman that we get to see grow up to become uh, the person that she always dreamed of being when she was playing as a child. Uh, and that really was a, an opportunity for me to be able to put the camera into a variety of scenarios really around camera movement. So we went on a variety of different camera mounts. Uh, we did vehicle work shooting a motorcycle from a, uh, a vehicle mounted crane called the Motocrane. Uh, and really the ability to use a small format camera that has all of the image quality that you come to expect from the Vericam line. I, I actually started calling it the Vericam Micro because it truly has all of the things that I'm, I'm used to seeing in Vericam, uh, but now is presented in a form factor that I can put in every scenario you can imagine. Um, having full frame is something that's new to me. I'm usually used to Super 35, so having the options to be able to go uh, from a small format to a large format as the shoot requires uh, truly was a revelation, and it's something that uh, we've been looking forward to in a camera in this form factor for a long time. So. Obviously, you sat through a lot of the color sessions yeah. um, that we worked on, and you know, ultimately, were you satisfied with what you were seeing from that vlog and vgamut, and how yeah. far we were able to push the files? Yeah, I was really uh, stunned, to be honest. Once we started getting all of, we we also worked on putting together the compilation piece that you're about to see. So we got to see the films from all of the different filmmakers and seeing such a variety of scenarios. Uh, really having the ability to to manipulate the footage. Uh, in ways that you wouldn't expect from a camera in this form factor. Uh, the dynamic range, we were shooting in the middle of Alabama Hills, which is a very harsh environment uh, uh, in uh, Central California. We were shooting uh, at noon in completely uncontrolled circumstances and we're holding highlights in wispy white clouds while I'm shooting a motorcyclist wearing black clothes with a black, motor with a black bike. We had detail at both ends of the spectrum we could choose to pull it up or pull it down really with impunity. So it, it far exceeded my expectations. Terrific. Well, I'm going to cut you off before anything sure. bad comes out. So no. I appreciate you spending sure. the time. Thank you, David. Thanks, man. All right. And finally, from the beautiful state of Utah, director Jacob Schwartz. Hey, Jacob. How's it going? Well, I'm feeling pretty short right now, to be honest with I'm you. I'm feeling a little better than that picture of me. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so just so everybody knows, full disclosure, Jacob and I have worked on projects in the past. We, um, Jacob was actually responsible for one of our launch videos for the GH5S uh, called Horizons. Um, after seeing the results of that and kind of knowing what we were working on, I immediately had Jacob in mind for this project. So I, I broke some non-disclosure rules and I got a hold of him and we, we started planning this not too long ago, or quite a while ago, really. Yeah. So. Um, ultimately, we, we just want to know what you did for the piece and what your thoughts are on the camera. Yeah, so we, we decided to shoot a short film. We just decided we're going to just go full out and just make a little short film. It ended up being seven minutes. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's um, a I short film. I think originally it was supposed to be like two to three minutes, Matt was telling me, but it ended up being seven. But that was how long it took to tell the story, I guess. But what we really wanted to do is I've, always, I've been shooting full frame for a while on different various cameras and I just absolutely love the look and feel that full frame gives people and so when Matt was telling me that they have a camera now that can shoot video full frame 6k 10 bit um, we were just ecstatic we fell in love when we did the GH5S um, with the the color science the profiles all that kind of stuff and then now having a camera that offers us multiple sensor croppings resolutions Codex, all that other stuff is just phenomenal for the price point that I think you guys are aiming for. So um, our little short film is about a story about a girl um, who's um, trying to give her debt. Her uh, She's an astronaut and she's trying to give her blind father the best gift she could give her, which is um, a view of her new world. And so it's kind of like a little short little piece. And the camera performed flawlessly for us in that regards. Perfect. And then... You know, we, we talk a little bit about this whole ACES workflow and, and camera matching, uh, and I'm catching on the spot here a little bit yeah. with this, because you, you shoot with a lot of different camera brands. You, you don't just stick within a wheelhouse of, of our brand. Um, do you think that this camera is going to work well with other camera brands and, and match well as, as people do productions? Absolutely. I think that's the thing I was most impressed with with this camera. Is, I mean, the dynamic range on this is phenomenal. 
I think one thing that we always run into as filmmakers is like, what can I do? What are my limitations? How, what, what, what wheelhouse do I have to work in? And this camera, like I would match any of the other cameras I've shot with Perfect. hands down flawlessly. Awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean, and the fact that it's, it's in a smaller form factor so, and is incredible. So, yeah, I think as a B or C camera for really high end productions, it's mm -hmm. going to match really well with what people are trying. Oh, to perfectly. Do. It would match perfectly. Yeah. So. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate thank it. You. I was going to see. All right. So, so Jacob, thank you again for coming down and now let's take a sneak peek at the projects that all of you have been working on. So one final note, um, we snuck some time-lapse footage Panasonic. and some macro shots into there for you. I want to send a special thanks to Scott Portingale. Uh, he's a photographer that we worked with to do those time-lapses out of Canada, and I think he did a brilliant job on those time-lapses. So I just want to make sure we give him proper credit for the work he has done. So um, so with that, yeah, Mane-san, I think it's time that we reveal some more S-Series information for the, for the crowd. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Today, there is one more thing I would like to talk about. I want to introduce a new S-Pro full-frame lens, which you can use with s one h This is a new constant f2.8 zoom lens for L-mount, the Lumix S-Pro 24-70mm f2.8. Besides high resolution, high contrast, and beautiful bokeh, which are the features of a Lumix Pro lens, this lens incorporates focus and aperture, designed also for video shooting, and uh, realizes realize high speed and high precision autofocus. I really would like all of you to utilize this new lens which shows uh, high performance not only for still images, 
but also for video shooting. Here are some examples. Here you can feel the beauty of nature and see the details in the trees. This image shows the cool and clean water and the fresh green vegetation. Please take note of the beautiful bouquet in this picture. Please look at the video shot with this new lens. Panasonic. Let me touch upon our lens strategy once again. We formed the Air Mount Alliance with Leica and Sigma to provide creators with a wide variety of lenses. What's 46? That is the number of air mount native lenses which will be introduced by the end of physical year 2020. Last month, Sigma introduced three new air mount lenses, and I will also introduce ours today. More and more high quality and unique air mount lenses will be introduced. Stay tuned. On top of 46 L mount lenses, 50 Cine lenses from Lights and Sigma are ava available, and all of them can be used with L PL mount adapter. So, in total, approximately 100 lenses will be available for cine cinema creation by the end of the next physical year. We will continuously fill videographers, cinematographers, and photographers' creative vision. This is our latest air mount lens roadmap. At Cinegia, I said I would develop 10 lenses by the end of the next physical year. I'm happy to say now it is 11. This year, on top of current three lenses, we will launch three lenses, including two constant f2.8 lenses. I will officially announce one of them today. Next year, we will develop another five lenses, such as macro, prime, telephoto, wide, and standard. Please expect, expect a wide variety of Lumix lenses.
changing photography is our Lumix business philosophy. Based on this philosophy, I want to continuously develop products which are responding and exceeding your current and future expectations. Stay tuned to Panasonic. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being a part of this exciting announcement. We realize that your time is valuable and we appreciate your attention today. We look forward to many more exciting announcements in the near future. Thank you very much.